I'd say, how have you came to the fr- the Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Alright, next. <laughs> <laughs> this is difficult. Let's start again. Okay. We're not good at this game. <laughs> no, we're not. Are you ready? I love how you're passing me the mic. Like, you can take this one, Rosie. Yeah. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Just Interesting People podcast. My name is Rosie and I'm here with my co-host and lovely husband, Jeremy. I'm in a bit of a funny mood. Jeremy might pop in a little clip, but I've just sang The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and I didn't know I was being filmed. So just be prepared for some funny and funny questions today. But today we're doing a Q&A. Uh, we'll quickly listen to the um, questions. So Jeremy's going to play them and go through and we'll kind of give our answers, right? Yeah, we haven't done that for a while. It's the first time we're doing that on YouTube, actually. But yeah, before we start, this is Rosie singing the the fresh pens of better. Upside down, no, like it took a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how we came to the, the, the fresh prince of Bella. Hope you enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was being recorded. I actually want to do it with the lyrics in front of me because I think I'd do a way better performance. So, right. So <laughs> we've done that a couple of times last year, where usually we are the one asking questions to our guests and you know we thought just to do a little bit different we would ask our guests to get questions for us so i've reached out to some of our guests and we got a bunch of questions we've got nine right now uh, i'm not sure we're gonna have time to um, go through all of them but we'll do a few and and we can keep the rest for another episode they are not in specific order we just listened to them a few minutes ago so we didn't have time to come up with nice scripted answers the point is to be spontaneous about it so yeah we're gonna start with a question from hugo hey guys it's hugo here how are you doing it was really lovely chatting to you guys earlier this year um yeah so i was curious as to what made you want to set up this podcast what were your motivations um what led you to this point especially the subject matter um it'd be really cool i feel like if you could let your audience and the people that you have already interviewed know why you decided to do this. All right. Hope you're doing well. Lots of love. Thank you, Hugo, for that. Uh, That's a good question, actually, to start. And how did this podcast and now YouTube channel come to life? Um, It was basically a conversation we were having for dinner, Rosie and I, a few years ago, like 2018, I think it was, just after moving to Miami was just going down memory lane that you say (laughs) and and thinking about cool interesting people that we met while we travel and how you know even if you do remember things you tend to forget details about conversations here and there especially if you have a bad memory like rosie (laughs) and we were like how cool would it be to have like a recording of this conversation we had in Indonesia during our honeymoon or this conversation we had, you know, with this guy we met over there and stuff like that. And, and yeah, that was like the starting point, the little idea. And and it was like, and we could also share them with people because if we found value in those conversations, you know, maybe other people would. And that was really like the, the first original idea about, about it. Yeah. So that was what 2018 you said. And then, in 2020, Jeremy was doing some personal development trainings and him and his friend decided to start a podcast together. And Jeremy came home one day, he was like, right, we're starting the podcast. And I was like, what podcast? What were you talking about? And he was like, the one we talked about like two years ago. And I was like, you're going to have to remind me again. Yeah, because funny enough, when I had the ID, I booked the domain name, justinterestingpeople.com. I got the Instagram, I got everything. So I was like, just in case this ID becomes reality one day, I have everything ready. Yeah, so he came home one day, he's like, we're doing it. And I was like, okay, (laughs) let's do it. And he was like, no, as in like starting next week or something. So it was like, (laughs) oh shit, okay. So like made a quick logo on Canva, asked some of our friends in Miami and everyone was super supportive and helped us. And yeah, that's how it started in February, was it? March? Yeah, February 2020. February 2020. And then earlier this year for our two-year anniversary, we decided to start on YouTube as well. So now I've got videos. So if you're listening to us on any podcast episodes, you can actually go ahead and watch us, which I think is a little bit more, for me personally, I find it more engaging to actually watch videos, but I know some people prefer just to listen. Yeah, Jeremy's pulling a funny face. (laughs) Um, So yeah, it's been quite the journey. We've interviewed so many different people and I can't even remember, like I wouldn't be able to list everybody we've spoken to because it's been, I don't know, a lot of episodes. episode 131 
we had a few guests coming back but yeah i mean it's 100 guests for sure yeah. i would say um but no yeah so yeah this is the backstory basically and and i'm very happy we did it because i think it'll be interesting for us also in 10 years time to listen to some conversation about people we met when we were living in miami or in yeah. peru and stuff like that and and and, and yeah it's gonna be cool and also even if at the beginning it started with people that we've met and we knew in person it evolved eventually at people we haven't met but we came across online or stuff like that mm. and now my goal is to actually meet all the strangers to actually yeah just connect physically in real life and and become you know like friends and stuff like that which is like we we, we actually made met Pepe Boyo for example a few weeks ago in England that was really cool so yeah that's my that's my goal for the future is to actually meet all the people that we don't personally know and hang out <laughs> and then in terms of the subject matter like you know Hugo mentioned about why this subject and I think it's just that I think as people we've always been interested in stories like you know if even if you look back at like cavemen they would tell stories writing on the caves and things it's just kind of in our human nature to want to know about other people and know about their lives and kind of storytelling so I think it's kind of something that we naturally want to do because it, you know we're humans but it's also something that other people are interested in it's something that like when we were traveling like Jeremy said a couple of years ago we'd meet people and be like oh my god they're fascinating like I've never met anyone who has said this before who has thought this before who has done this before whatever it was and it's just more about like telling people stories and us learning from it and then other people also listening and taking bits of information and you know learning bits here and not there and yeah it's been I don't know it's been cool yeah and I, and I also personally changed a lot as a person being in contact with different people and listening hearing to different stories that I know that can be also impactful so I know the the power of listening to people that are very different to us, you know, and that can have a, a, a huge impact on, on your life. And also hearing people sharing stories that you can relate to, especially when it's shit stuff happening. We tend to feel alone when bad stuff happen and and we don't have anyone that went through it in our close circle and hearing the story of someone that went through something similar and stuff like that can be a way also to feel less lonely and and know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel you know for example stuff like that so i do know like there is this power in stories and in putting it in, in putting it out there it's not always easy right but um but i think it's worth sometime going through the, the difficult time of sharing it because i think the reward for for you for sharing it and for other people can be can be exponentially so yeah that was it. Thank you, Hugo, for this <laughs> cool question. And next one. Which one? I'm picking them randomly, so. Hi, guys. My question for you is what would be your last meal? So, f Rosie, you go first. Oh, my God. I don't know. I always say, okay, we're having a three-course meal? Yeah. Okay. Starter would be mozzarella and tomatoes with olive oil and a pinch of salt and that delicious vinegar stuff that you put on top that's like gloopy that's not vinegar i don't know what it's called but that vinegar? yeah but what the one where it's a bit gloopy and you only get it in restaurants <laughs> okay um that main course oh, oh i don't know i do love sushi or poke bowls that kind of thing like it's just fresh and delicious um in particular, I would get some of those veggie rolls from Paris that we used to get. I would get like certain ones from other different places where we've eaten. Like I'd get just my best, my favorite sushis from all around the world. And then for dessert, I would have chocolate melt in the middle cake with chocolate. have that anymore, you're gluten. Well, I would have it because it's my last day on <laughs> earth. Who cares if I shit myself when I'm already dead? <laughs> I would have <laughs> chocolate melt in the middle fudge cake with chocolate ice cream, a chocolate flake stuck on top, chocolate sauce on top, maybe a bit of salted caramel ice cream with, no, I think that'd be good, with maybe a maybe mojito. That's why it's the last meal. Yeah, with a mojito and some orange juice and a hot chocolate. And, right. and also maybe a couple of Cadbury's chocolate bars, like crunchy and 
Yeah. <laughs> I think you'll be full after that, it's all right. Yeah. Funny enough, this is a question I've thought about before, actually, and my question is a sneaky, my answer is a sneaky one. But no, you can't have it. I would pick a, I would pick an all you can eat buffet. No, <laughs> that's not allowed. So I can have whatever I want from no. the buffet. That's a good answer. It is, but it, no, you have to have an actual answer. What's your actual answer? Um, my actual answer would be as a starter, I would have a plateau of charcuterie with like ham and homemade pate made by my parents mm. and saucisson and yeah, stuff like that mm-hmm. with olive and stuff. As the main meal, that is the toughest thing ever. But I think I would, I think I would go for a proper, good uh, lasagne bolognese dish. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I would be that. A big one though, like a four people portion. A six person. Yeah, like six. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. Yeah, like a big dish, like a kilo, right? Um, and <laughs> as a dessert. Uh, I don't really do this, to be honest. Uh, cheese. That would be my, my thing. Eleanor's cookies. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll do that. What about Eleanor's mac One and sec. cheese? One second. What about Eleanor's mac and cheese? <laughs> no, nah, we'll go for lasagna. Okay. Um, plate of cheese. All the cheese that I want. Like Roquefort, goat cheese, yeah. camembert, with like the jam that is going with them. Stuff like that. With obviously a few baguettes in the middle. Just to put everything down. And yeah, maybe like a cookie or a... a Sticky, sticky toffee pudding <laughs> thing also I do like that yeah. <laughs> it is pretty yummy we introduced Joan with a sticky toffee pudding earlier this year from like a local place near us in the north of England and you don't usually eat desserts but you were having that on a regular basis yeah I pretty enjoy that <laughs> yeah. yeah I think that would be it but yeah first option would be all you can eat buffet that's my well that would be one. everyone's answer surely <laughs> well no one think about it you didn't <laughs> right just being sneaky yeah I know Thank you, Lorraine, for this really cool question, though I I did enjoy it. (laughs) Aloha, this is Emilia Garth, and my question for you guys is, if you had a global megaphone where everyone in the whole world could hear your message and it would be simultaneously translated so that everyone could understand it accurately, what message would you say if you only had 15 seconds to speak into that global megaphone? What is your message for the world? Thank you, Emilia. That is a pr- pretty cool question. I have no idea. Nothing is coming to mind. I mean, cliche, cheesy stuff are coming to mind, but One minute, I've got seconds. my phone, and we're going to do a 15-second timer each. Oh, boy. <laughs> are you ready? No, 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 no. One sec. Give me a... Um, do you want to go first? Do you know what you will yeah. say? Okay, I need to think about it. Oh, okay, we've only got 15 seconds. Uh, I have to put time here so you guys can see. So, three, two, one, go. Be kind. Don't not like anybody. That didn't make sense. Uh, be kind to everybody. Love everybody. Oh, no, start again. This is too difficult. No, no, no. no start again. Stop, <laughs> stop, stop. That was already nine seconds. I had to say anything. <laughs> this is difficult. Start again. Okay. We'll do it again. <laughs> Oh, we're going. Um, be kind to everybody. Be kind to everybody, even if they are different. Do something you love. Chase your dreams. Don't be afraid to do something that other people aren't doing. Love everybody. Be kind and travel and have fun and be kind. That was a lot of be kind. I think people need to be kinder in the world, apparently. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. I, I w- that was like something similar I had in mind, but. Um, when do we start the timer? Yeah, let me just give me one sec. Um, it's funny because I feel we all would have like the same cheesy answer to this question in a way. Uh, is that cheesy? Well, it's not cheesy, but like that's what expected, right? And I'm thinking yeah, but like, I also what think, would I... like people are so quick to judge people because they're different? Yeah. And if everybody just knew that everybody was more the same and they are different, I think the world would be a better place. Yeah. Maybe that'd be my message. <laughs> Here we go. Um, you ready? All right, go for it. Go. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you just wasted it. Quit. I have a second to go again. Stop. Okay. <laughs> we're not going to do this, guys. No, we're not. Are you ready? No, but... Go. Don't judge people the way they look. Look outside your own bubble. The world is a big place. People are different. You can learn from all of them. Don't listen to the news, to the TV. Stop watching them. They just tell you a pile of shit. The world is amazing and people Stop. are awesome. 
Yeah, good. <laughs> That's tough. You should try that yourselves at home. Pause the podcast, put a timer on 15 seconds and see what comes up naturally for you. Like, what would you just say? Because it's interesting. Do it on an Instagram story mm. and tag us on there and we will reshare them. Because yeah. a story is 15 seconds, so you have to fit everything in one story. That's a fun game, right? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Emilia, for this really cool uh, question. Uh, n- not easy, but uh, I'm curious to know also what's your answer to this one. And actually, I would have to have the same for Lorraine before. Mm. What would be your last meal? I'll, I'll have to double check that. <laughs> All right, next. Hey, Jeremy and Rosie. I've got a question for you. If you could be a combination of any two animals, what would they be? And what would it look like? Have fun with it. Peace and love. <laughs> I love this one. That is a very random question that no one ever asked me, to be honest. Um, it depends how you want to approach it, but the first one that came to my mind it's like always when I get this question asked about like your spirit animal, your favorite animal, it's always the manta ray mm. coming to mind personally. So I think half of that would be a manta ray. And I think I would mix it with, I don't know which one exactly, but a bird. So basically it would be a flying manta ray. So you could be in the sky and in the water. That was going to be my answer. <laughs> you just stole it from my brain. Um, like an eagle or like a condor, like a very majestic big bird. Um, so yeah, you could explore all the beauty of the ocean, stuff like that. And I think like the manta ray has like a spiritual side, like a peaceful thing, you know, when you see them and stuff like that. And then you have like the, I don't know, like a majestic bird flying, exploring the world and and seeing the world from above and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I think that would be my my answer to it. I should have gone first for this one because that was my. I was like thinking. I was like, okay, I'll definitely combine a fish and a bird because the underwater world. If you've not been scuba diving, it's incredibly beautiful and so like overwhelmingly stunning. Like it's just like nothing else you've ever seen. So for sure, I. W- but I think I would be more like if we're going to actually name animals. Oh. I was going to say, I like penguins, but they live in the cold and I hate the cold. So it'd have to be a tropical fish. Mm. So uh, let's... A puffer fish, who's that? Maybe a puffer fish. Probably with, combined with like a hummingbird mm. or like something cute and pretty and you see it and you think, oh, that's cute. It's got fat cheeks, but it also flies. <laughs> it'd have to be something tropical though like i am such a like i do not enjoy the cold even though from england so it'd have to be something warm it's like a warm a fish that lives in warm water and a bird that lives in warm countries but can also fly around and something that lives in like a palm tree i'm not that good on birds yeah it's it's interesting you pick hummingbird because like those are i think quite not static i don't think they explore the world right so oh, quite okay. limited area and they go from like thing to another but um a sparrow do they travel much? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a good I don't know bird about guy. mammal. Yeah, I don't know about animal. We would have to travel. ask Walter, our yeah. official bird expert. But same answer, a bird and a fish, but it would be, rather than yours is like a fucking huge manta ray and then a graceful big eagle, mine would be like a cute little fish that's like colourful and then a cute little bird that can just whizz around everywhere and live in a palm tree and go and sit on the beach if it wants to. So before we actually started... <laughs> record this episode i pressed i played the question once and rosie was like are we talking about animals that represent me the way i'm right now or <laughs> thing i would like to be in so can you share also this answer <laughs> well if it was two animals that would represent me not right now i said well half of it would definitely be a sloth because <laughs> i just love my sleep i love being <laughs> killed upon the set i mean as much as we love travel i also do love being at home and like being comfy like sleeping so it'd be half sloth and then maybe like half elephant i don't know why elephant. i like elephants okay. i'm picturing right now an elephant <laughs> like a sloth, you know, like <laughs> hanging from a tree with like his like, <laughs> upside down no if it was me right now i think it'd be half sloth and then half something maybe those meerkats or something a little bit weird yeah something a bit odd 
<laughs> what would yours be if it was representing you right like as a person? Oh boy, I have no idea. I've never even thought about that ever. Well, go on. What would I, uh... <laughs> no clue. Absolutely no clue. Something intelligent. Pigs are intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Dolphins are also intelligent, right? Or octopuses. Maybe an octopus. I like octopus. And then something like caring and French. What's a French animal? <laughs> All right, next. Next question. <laughs> All right, next, Nelson. So my question is, what convinced you guys to become digital nomads? Interesting to hear the story behind that. <sighs> That's going to be... a. Uh... Complex answer, I think. <laughs> I don't think we ever just decided to be digital nomads. It wasn't like a, hey, let's do it. It kind of just happened over the past couple of years, right? From like, was moving to Miami with your job and then, do you not think? Yeah, it's been like, I mean, no, I think it was a proper decision. I think the, 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 the thing that was progressive was that we realized it was a possibility in our life yeah that came progressively by going to miami meeting people working from home realizing that i'm just spending my time on a computer and youtube and we could, and we could do that anywhere stuff like that so like that took a while to come yeah but then to actually take the decision i think um it was around 2020 when I when I started like considering leaving my job mm. because I wanted to pursue something else, and like I, as much as I loved my job, I wanted to do something else because I thought I was kind of stuck where I was and not really progressing anymore and stuff like that. And and quitting my job meant not having a visa to stay in Miami anymore. So that means that we would have to move somewhere else. And because we both like to travel and everything, we thought, well, if we have to go somewhere else, we don't really know where to go. We don't really want to go back to France. We don't really want to, want to go back to the UK. There's no place that we want to go back to. And we can't stay in Miami because we don't have a visa. So why don't we just don't go anywhere and go anywhere, basically? And 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 be wherever we want to be right and so that was kind of a thought process of like we're gonna stop living in one place and have a job to maybe embrace the fact that our skills allow us to work on our laptop anywhere we have an uh, internet i think the other thing that was like a serious consideration that i think probably people don't talk about with digital nomad life is that say for example we were like okay let's move to spain well in order to get an apartment in spain either to buy it you need a lot of cash or you need to get a mortgage to get a mortgage you need a job or to rent an apartment you either need a lot of money or you need a job to pay the mortgage to pay the rent every month so it was also kind of a thing of like well yeah we've got a bit of money saved up but not enough to kind of just outright buy a house in some country somewhere so it was kind of a bit like well you know, as we want to start building our own income and working for ourselves and doing that thing, like James said, we enjoy traveling. We don't really want to go back to England. We don't want to go back to France. We didn't have a property because we sold our apartment that we had and plus there was someone living there anyway. So it was a bit like, you know, okay, we can either spend our money and travel and live in different places and do that as our life, like lifestyle, or, or we could move to wherever it would be, like Spain, it's like somewhere in Europe with well, well, the visa things a bit difficult now because of brexit but like we could have you know gone to spain but that would mean having to get a full-time job again which would either mean going to the office or working full-time and then still not really pursuing what we want to be doing which is working for ourselves and being kind of free from that so i think that's something that people don't really talk about they're like oh i just want you to be free and wild and you know enjoy life and it's like well yeah it was that but it was also that like in order to get like a mortgage or rent somewhere you do need to have a full-time job which means getting back into the world that we've just quit from so that was also i think something that people don't often talk about but it's actually like a real factor that you know you can't just like land somewhere without a job and expect to find someone who'll give you an apartment to rent or somewhere to buy no yeah that's a good point yeah it it, it was a being a digital nomad was a choice but also yeah, a consequence of we wanted especially me, to quit my job in order for us to work on our own projects mm. so we could hopefully at least give it a shot, right, to become financially independent 
can not have to get a job somewhere at least for a while mm. um maybe one day i would want to but you know at the moment that's what i want in my life and yeah to be able to do that that means that you're not going to have any income or any regular income for a while to have a stable apartment and stable place to live which means that you need to based on how much saving you have go somewhere with a low cost of living where you can just rent an airbnb and stuff like that so you don't have to you know provide your last uh three pay sleep and stuff like that to prove that you have a job and a sustainable income and regular income stuff like that right mm. so because we were in this place and we were creating this uncertainty and this insecurity for us we had to adjust also our lifestyle to fit that because right now the, the world you know when you want to buy a place or rent officially a place you're asked all those things that we couldn't provide basically um oh, we so, didn't want to as well. yeah we didn't want to but also i mean even if i wanted to i just couldn't right like the like i wanted to create my own thing you too you wanted to create your own thing uh yeah. we were not gonna make enough money <laughs> throw away to to be able to afford the things like that so that was also a consequence of that basically and um and yeah and it's it's interesting honestly like it's i think not as dreamy as people uh, make it look like on instagram you know um there, there's obviously a lot of i mean it's all a choice but it's, it's just how you see it right I, I do enjoy personally living in my backpack and not having merch and being in one place and then the other and stuff like that but also know that it's, it is a source of stress but i think the stress and the uncertainty is not coming from being a digital nomad personally it's more like i'm a digital nomad because i'm trying i'm trying to grow create and grow my business and that means that financially speaking you know i i have like uh i'm in a place where i'm more like unstable than i was with a full-time job where i know i have my paycheck at the end of the month and that's creating some uncertainty and insecurity that makes it a bit stressful for once once in a while because you don't know how big your net pay check is going to be and when it's going to be and stuff like that so that's creating like you you have to accept to cut back on things. yeah cut back and also like you know live not like day by day because obviously you need to plan a bit but like you don't know what you're going to be doing in six months or eight months because it depends on how the business is going to be doing in this time frame right so yeah but I think what you said about influencers on Instagram who are like, you know, digital nomad life. I think digital nomad life, if you're making 10, 20 grand a month, would be fucking amazing. Oh. Of course it would, because you can fly here, there and everywhere, stay in incredible resorts, eat at incredible restaurants, live the high life and do that whole thing and show off to everybody as if life's amazing, which I'm sure it would be. Mm. But we were not at that stage yet we're still at the stage where we're like kind of trying to save money so it's a bit like okay well where's a cheap flight where can we get cheap accommodation where's cheap to live long term like you know we're now in albania because it's cheap accommodation cheap food cheap lifestyle so it's you know of course i would love to go to the maldives for two years or two months or two weeks yeah. but that costs like 10 grand a night or something ridiculous so it's kind of a bit like managing expectations of like influencers who are digital nomads who are making a fuck ton of money and they can afford to travel around the world and live that high life that might be us one day but for right now we're kind of in the stage of growing our businesses and trying to get there i've forgotten the original question why did we become digital oh, nomad? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah but that wasn't my point because i don't compare myself on you know i'm on like kind of day one of the process mm. to those people making 20 years their own you know year three or four yeah, or five yeah. so i'm not i don't that's not what i'm comparing actually like it's more like even if you make 10 or 20k there are some things that digital might don't talk about about always being on the move uh, being about you know not feeling settled somewhere maybe about being away from family especially when shit happens stuff like that yeah. like the, most people don't talk about that you don't have you, you can't see your friends on a weekend you don't have your group of people that you can rely on if you have anything going on in your life stuff like that and that's mm. not tied to the income that's yeah, what i mean yeah. by you know all you see from digital nomad is like well i'm having a morito on the beach and stuff like that but you also don't see the eight hours a day or six hours a day they spend on a laptop inside the apartment they're in working yeah. because to, to create this highlight that they show you on the beach they have to work a lot on site like 
and you know we tend to share only the highlight not the boring day where we stay at home the whole time walking editing video or whatever yeah and that's what i mean by that it's like yeah. you, we only see one side of the digital life lifestyle mm. on social media we don't see the boring part of it yeah. and there is one like everything else right yeah and i think it's relevant what you said about like not ever feeling settled i think that's one of my biggest things at the minute well for the past like two years i've been like when can we buy a house when can we buy a house when can we buy a house? like i'm dying to get a house and be settled but then in the same breath when we were in miami for two years i was like okay i'm, I'm kind of bored like i love miami but can we go somewhere else now <laughs> so there's always that kind of you know there's two sides to it it's like you know if you have a house where you're settled and you've got your friends and you've got your core group and you've got a job and all these things that's great but i also get bored but then when you're traveling and you're staying like in one place for a week and another place for two weeks, this place for one month and whatever, you also get tired. You're kind of always in a new environment. You're always kind of trying to adapt to new languages and new money, new food, new environment, new weather, new, like everything's new all the time, which is exciting, but it's also exhausting in terms of like long-term travel. But So yeah, it's, I don't regret it. Uh, nothing went as planned. To be honest, uh, since we decided to start this lifestyle, mm. nothing went according to the plan. So it's been a hell of a start of being a digital nomad. I don't think I'm, I mean, technically we are, but I don't feel like, we're I don't, I don't feel like we are, not the fun part of it at least. Mm. Um, but, but at the same time, I'm happy that I, mm, I, I took the risk to quit to be able to build my own thing and take the time for that and stuff yeah. like that because I'm hoping that this this is going to pay off eventually, right? And yeah, ultimately the goal of becoming a digital nomad, so I mean, personally, was to create freedom and and have the... I don't need to rely on a company to be in a place or to tell me when I want to work. I wanted to create more freedom in my life. I want to be able to work when I want, as much as I want, and hopefully make enough money so I can be wherever I want with that. And and yeah, and I think this is something that we could achieve. Um, we are on the right path for it, and I hope it's gonna work out. <laughs> yeah. We'll tell you next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, last question. We'll do a second Q&A for that. Um, for the rest, because we have a lot more questions. But last question from Anthony and Elena. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Rosie. So our question for you is, what advice would you have for anyone wanting to start a podcast, especially if it's with their other half? <laughs> Pick the good half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, I love how you're passing me the mic. Like, you can take this one, Rosie. Um, I think... Honestly, I think figuring out who's doing what was good <laughs> for me, right? for me. Well, only because like, yeah, it was our idea. But at the time I was just like, I haven't got the, I just don't want to do any of the like anything boring stuff. Like, yeah, I'll sit and talk to people, but I don't want to like edit videos, edit the podcast, find people. Well, I do find people sometimes, but like, I think just figuring out who's doing what, like, okay, you're going to have this part of the business or the podcast or whatever, and you're going to have this part. Um, I think also recording on good days helps like if you've had an argument an hour before it's not going to help in the podcast because you can probably see the tension on your face so record when you're having a good day um, I'm trying to think of things specific to working with your partner yeah I mean in general also just to advise if you want to start a podcast it would be make sure you're in it for the long game mm. don't plan to start a podcast if you only have ideas for five episodes because ultimately whatever your goal with whatever your goal is with your podcast it's a marathon it's not like a sprint it's something that if you want to grow it and build a brand around it or whatever it's going to take years not weeks not months so you need to make sure that you have enough substance in whatever your podcast is about to be able to last that long and so that's the first thing I would like, I would like to say. Second one is be consistent. Yeah. Don't don't do it and try to like win it or whatever. Like be consistent, have a schedule in place, respect it, and because that's also helping with all the algorithm and stuff and all stuff like that. So yeah, consistency. Be patient because yeah, it's going to take forever, much longer than you expect. 
to get anything out of there if that's what you want. Obviously, if it's just for fun, then it doesn't matter. But don't have much expectation on the short term. And yeah, in terms of like more. One second. I think also in, um, include other people. So I think that's quite important because if it was just us podcasting every single week, we've only we only know a certain amount of people and a certain amount of people that are actually tune in and listen to us talking every single week. But the fact that we speak to new people mostly every week I think is good because their audience might listen or their friends and family or you know their partner whoever it is might listen to the episode which is just new listener and it's a new play that we wouldn't have gotten if it was just us so even if your podcast is mostly you I would invite you to think about maybe having somebody on once a month or something like that so that you do get new people in to grow your audience and to grow your listening base yeah so that you do get more people listening niche down also as much as you can uh says the, the people with no niche at all yeah but <laughs> if i had to do it again i would maybe try to niche down but it's if you can as ideal because it will be much easier to grow so talk about beers guys if that's what your mm. what your thing is right uh, Antonia and elena um but yeah like the niche you are more niche. the more niche you are the better the more chance you will have to grow i think and to you know find your your tribe and your target audience and stuff mm. like that. What about working with a partner? Yeah, about that, I would say, yeah, I mean, define... And, I mean, I don't think being like a life partner is that important. I think it's more like with anyone, mm. with any co-host that you would pick, being your partner in life or no, would be make sure you're aligned on what you want to do in a podcast, make sure you are clear on who, like who's doing what in the show, and... Because, yeah, you know, if after 20 weeks or whatever, one of them is bored, like one of you is bored or whatever, like you, that's going to be a pain to rebrand, to change things and stuff like that. And also maybe you won't have the skills that this person had to keep the show running on your own. So make sure from the start that you're both in on the long term and, 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 and that, yeah, you can help each other out and rely on each other if one of you is feeling down and stuff like that. Because... Yeah, it takes a while and it takes time. Like you only see a forty-five to an hour, forty-five minute to an hour episode a week, but it's actually you know the editing, making the research. Uh, if you have guests, it's contacting guests, organizing the things and stuff like that. It takes much more than the forty-five minutes or hour long that you see every week. So don't underestimate the work that it's, it's going to take to run the show. But yeah, have a good chemistry with your partner. Make sure that you can you know you're different like you can rely on each other in case you don't have the inspiration today to ask mm. questions or stuff like that i think having a good chemistry is well having a bad chemistry would be very obvious on the show and would have a bad impact on it yeah. so i think it's important to have a good one because it will be felt by the audience the way you guys interact mm. yeah i think that's, that's a good bunch of advice already i think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um well that was fun yeah we will do probably another episode in a few weeks because we have a few questions left and yeah it'll be it's, it's just a fun way for you guys to learn more about us and it's always fun to be on the other side and to get the question asked and it's maybe kind of like revenge after us yeah. digging into the life right of our guests they, they, they can have a payback a little bit <laughs> so it's fun yeah. um yeah we hope you enjoyed that we will be back next week with a new episode with a guest as usual Thank you so much for watching or listening. Make sure to like this video if you're watching it and comment down below anything that you've enjoyed today, something you've learned from us. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. Make sure you leave us a review on your podcast place. Do all of the things. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.